Hey guys, what's up and welcome back or to our channel. If you're new here, my name's Christine and I'm one half of the Roomies Digest. If you clicked on this video today, you know that you are in for my annotation guide, the annotation tag, which was originally created by Bowties and Books. They have all these amazing questions that really just go down and break down exactly what you need to know about annotating or specifically how a certain booktuber <laughs> annotates her books. I was tagged in this video by my good friend Vish from Books with V. So if you guys get a second, go and check out her channel because I basically get all of my fantasy and sci-fi recs from her. We have very similar tastes and I know that she also annotates too. So you can check out her video, which I have linked down below. I'm not gonna lie, I was a little nervous to record this video because my annotation style is what some could probably call a lot of work. It is definitely my Virgo moon, like fulfilling its destiny in the pages of my books. I have a very not complicated to me per se, but I think it's not like a couple of tabs type of annotation guide. And if you're new to annotating, you know, this might not be the exact way that you want to annotate, but maybe kind of seeing how I do it can give you some ideas for your own annotation style. If you guys are interested in kind of doing the same type of annotation style as me, you are more than welcome to do so. It's very involved, but I have all of the links to all my supplies down below. So if you guys want to order them and do the same exact thing, that is completely fine. I support you in your endeavors. So, Without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Bum, bum, da, 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 bum, bum, da. The first question on this list is, do you mark your annotations with page flags? And I do. I use this a very... <laughs> in-depth color coding system which we'll get into later what all these colors mean and kind of like how i do it but long story short i do in fact it's just these tabs that i get off of amazon and like bulk they work for me and i really love them so that's the answer to that question the next question number two is do you match flags to your book covers or do you have a set flagging system okay so really i do both okay so if it's a fantasy book or a sci-fi book that has a lot of world building a lot of characters a lot of plot like a lot of stuff that i'm gonna love then i'll use the entire color system because each one of these tabs means a different thing for me and so i will just tab it up okay perfect example of that is when i read dune last year this baby's got tabs for days, tabs for days. And we can talk about that in a little bit. So the other example I wanted to show you is on the other side of that, whenever I read a nonfiction, which I do tab a lot, or something that's like not as in depth. So something that I know I'm not gonna need to understand the magic system, or I'm not gonna need to understand the world because it's already laid out and perfectly understandable by itself. That is when I will match it to the cover of the book. So for example, Ace is a nonfiction book about asexuality and all of my tabs here, I don't know if you can see it, hopefully you can. They're yellow and purple. The same thing with this middle grade book that I read recently, The Night Diary. All of my tabs for this are blue. And that's, you know, because this is a historical fiction middle grade and I really just wanted to tab the stuff that I could remember. It's not like a very convoluted world. You know, it's pretty understandable set, you know, in our world. But yeah, so those are the two examples that I have of like matching the book. But usually, usually I only tab nonfiction books because it's a lot of learning involved. There's a lot of new concepts or, you know, things about people's lives or something like that. Or fantasy, which I started tabbing fantasy and only recently have gotten into nonfiction. But yeah, I do enjoy it. Like for Spectrum Women, um, this book that features women's stories about autism, that obviously is blue and red. Those are my two tabs for Spectrum Women. I don't know, it kind of matches the cover. <laughs> but yes, so that's the answer to question number two. Question number three is what is the first book you ever annotated? This is hilarious to me because it was Shadow and Bone. <laughs> Shadow and Bone, and I think I also rated it a three stars. This was the first book that I ever annotated. You can see, I don't, I don't even 
do my keys like this anymore. This is just a sticky note that tells what all of the colors are and it was a very basic kind of annotating that I did here. I just put in tabs. You know, I was a little scared. I was a little scared to write or really like delve deep into it. But this was kind of like the perfect book to start off with because Shadow and Bone is like a starter fantasy, right? And there are lots of things to like, lots of things to hate, lots of world building. That was the first one that I ever annotated. Have you ever been against annotating books? I would say no, I've never really been against it. I learned about annotating actually from my mom who's a teacher she never called it annotating but she would read a book write in it tab it sticky note it i think she actually just sent me one um that she did that too yeah she sent me be a work in progress by john cena you can see she put a little sticky note on there it says i wrote some comments on the pages not too deep but yeah, so my mom has always written in books, uh, especially the ones that she has given me. And she's got, you know, nice handwriting. That's just what she does. She's really funny because she will write, you know, facts about the characters and things like that. Like I remember she gave me a copy of Little Fires Everywhere and she was literally writing in the book, like the main characters ages. So like all the kids ages, because she was trying to understand their point of view when it would like go into the kids like chapters or whatever. So yeah, I mean, I have never really been against it. I just haven't always done it because I felt like there was a lot of pressure about annotating. And I think a lot of people feel this way. So if you are starting to annotate or you are interested and you're like, oh, I just don't know where to start. I mean, <laughs> Shadow and Bone, baby, just put some tabs in there. You don't have to write anything. Um, and that way, if you end up hating the book, you can just take the tabs out and give it away, sell it, do whatever with it. But that's my advice on that. Question number five, do you ease into annotating your books or did you jump right in? I mean, I guess this would be easing. Yeah, I guess this would be easing because I didn't necessarily write anything in this book. I just kind of tabbed it and was like, I'll try it. Obviously this was a long time ago, but yeah, I would say I eased into it because I wasn't at first sure, you know, what I wanted all of my colors to be. I've always used the same tabs, but let me see what this is. It's basically the same system. I basically have the same system. I think I just added one color because at one point I have two purples on here and I was like, what am I gonna use these two purples for? Purple is my favorite color. So that'll come in later when I explain the colors, but I did end up actually adding it because on here I've only got one purple. So. You know, it developed as I went went on with my life, but yeah. Question number six is, do you keep an unannotated version of your books? No, I don't. So I'm looking at all my fantasy books up here. No, not really. Once I decide to annotate it, it's like all or nothing. So there are some books that I haven't marked up that I might in the future get paperback copies for because I do prefer, I do prefer if it's a favorite of mine, I do prefer to annotate the paperback because there's something super satisfying about having like this mass market paperback and just being able to really rip it up. You know what I mean? Like crack the spine. Like I didn't even do that on purpose, but like that's how crazy it is. There's something super satisfying about having this copy and not really caring, you know, how pretty it is. Because I'm gonna tell you when I first got this, this book, this book looked really good, but now She's been through the ringer. She has been through the ringer. And this obviously isn't even my favorite book, but yeah, you know, it's just nice to be able to like muck up a paperback. So I think like the two copies of books that I would probably get paperbacks for and mark up would be The Cruel Prince trilogy. When I reread that, I definitely want to annotate it because I love it. And then the other would probably be The City of Brass, like the David Bad trilogy. Those would probably be the two that I would buy paperback copies of markup and then come back to later just because I like the hardbacks and I don't know I don't know check in with me when I do an update we'll see how that goes number seven is has anyone ever annotated a book for you the answer is yes my mom obviously we already talked about this but other than that like as in putting tabs and like things like that like a fantasy book no that would be really cool I would love that if you guys want to do like a annotation buddy book swap situation let's do it i'm down but no i think maybe probably just because i haven't reached out to anybody i know vish would be interested but she lives in australia so that would be really hard for us to ship but maybe you know maybe we can like save our pennies and 
invest in ourselves. I don't know, we'll see. Number eight is do you mind used books with annotations already in them? No, I don't mind at all. I actually buy a lot of books used. If I'm not sure if I'll like them, I'll thrift the book. But I do like seeing, you know, other people's notes and kind of like what they thought. So this is one of the reasons why I actually really like the Fable book club that we have because you can annotate in our book club with other people and kind of see other people's thoughts, their notes. And my policy is don't be the smartest person in the room. So if someone else can kind of like give me more information or give me more of a perspective so that I can understand why they love Love something, hate something, you know, are mediocre about something. I would like to know because I know that I probably have a very like skewed vision, version, point of view of something. So would love to have somebody else's notes. Have you ever gotten hate or horrified stares for writing in your books? No. And if I did, I really wouldn't care because they're my books. Number 10 is what do you annotate your books with? I'm going to save that question for the end because that's a convoluted process and I feel like we'll just wrap with that question. Um, number 11, have you ever regretted annotating a book? Yes, yes I have. So I um, started annotating the books for Fantasy Series, our fantasy series book club that I host with Rachel from Let Me in the Library, Nicole Lee from Bon Bon Reads, Jess from Books Past Bedtime. You know, we read fantasy books. That's like the whole point of our book club. It started with The Cruel Prince because we all loved it. And I will say that the one book that I wish I hadn't annotated was We Hunt the Flame. <laughs> I know a lot of people love this book, but I just like was not impressed with it. I don't know if it was just me at the time or what my deal was, but I just was not vibing with this book. It does have some really nice annotations in it and I would love to give this to someone. I'm looking to actually unhaul We Hunt the Flame and We Free the Stars. If anyone's interested in book swapping with some annotations and some they're not mean comments, but they are very like, I'm gonna call you out for what this is and like what's happening. If you guys are interested in that, DM me and let me know. I will book swap this with you. It does actually have my like updated annotation guide. So I started, ah, so a little while ago, I started doing this where basically it would clearly st state like what each of the tabs are and what they mean. So this is definitely my like updated annotating system. So if you guys really are interested, like, please let me know. I would love for this to go to somebody else. Hardback baby. Okay, cool. So that's the one that I definitely regret annotating because I wish I could give it to somebody or like donate it in good faith and sell it or something. Okay, so we're going to skip 12 too because that'll be at the end because it's why do you annotate? I feel like that's probably a long-winded answer. So let's go to 13. When underlining, do you use a ruler? My answer is no because I will read and annotate in different places all the time. Like I'm usually on set. I never like sit at home really and annotate. It's always like me going somewhere. So like I'm on a plane, on set, I'm, you know, whatever, like waiting for something usually. So I never really use a ruler. I just haven't really thought to use one. I don't know. It doesn't bother me if my you know, lines aren't perfectly straight. And this is how you can tell that I'm a Virgo moon, not like a Virgo sun. But yeah, if it really is like a shaky situation, like I'm on a bus or something, then I will just use kind of like the edge of like my tabs here and do it that way. But even that it's like, I don't really care. It's not, not that big of a deal. And then number 14 is, do you annotate each book that you read? No, I already kind of touched on this, but no, I don't. Definitely fantasy books that I think I'm going to love, sci-fi books that I think I'm going to need to understand, and nonfiction. Those are the three genres that I usually, usually annotate. Everything else is pretty, you know, simple and easy. And even then, like with fantasy, I might not even annotate YA fantasy. Like I might just annotate adult fantasy. Because so I think I learned that with We Hunt the Flame. Like I didn't really need to annotate this. It wasn't that hard to understand. So I don't know. I think that's one of the biggest reasons why I was like, ooh. And you know, like the spicy situations didn't get that spicy. The plot wasn't that crazy in comparison to something like Black Sun, where like there are so many just like foreign concepts and plot developments and character arcs and plot twists and lots of good fun moments, which can get confusing because there are three POVs in this adult fantasy. 
I will say that. It's probably more of an adult fantasy, nonfiction, or sci-fi. Any sci-fi really, because sci-fi is like hard to understand for me sometimes. They'll be talking about like parts of a ship and I'm like looking it up to be like, what is this thing that you're talking about? I have no idea. Me, science-based? No, not at all. So that is the answer to that question. Okay, so let's circle back to question number 12. Why do you annotate? So like I said, I annotate uh, adult fantasy, sci-fi, and nonfiction, and it's basically to better understand the book. I think physically reading things that have like a very involved magic system, things that have a very involved world, things that have very involved like terms, new concepts, anything that I'm learning, like with nonfiction, a lot of times I'll be reading about something I don't really know a lot about. So I want to better understand it. And for me, the way that my brain works, I can underline, highlight, tab, you know, important things, things that I want to remember, things I want to refer back to. And that's where annotating comes in. It really helps me process what I'm reading and better understand it. I think a great example of this is the first time I ever read The Poppy War, it was on audiobook. And I really enjoyed it. I think I gave it like a four and a half or like maybe five stars, maybe five stars. But I like wasn't super into the book. But now because of fantasy series, we are reading that book and this will be my reread. I'm like physically reading this book and y'all, I'm not that far into it, even though our live show is like in a couple of days. I'm not that far into it, but like the tab situation is out of this world. Like that's insane. I'm on page... 75. I don't know if you can see that, but that's like the rainbow. Like the rainbow is popping out in this book and I'm just having such a good time with it. Like you can kind of see what's going on with the poppy war right now. There's a lot, you know what I mean? Like there's a lot that I didn't understand the first time, a lot that I'm getting from it now. And I'm just enjoying it a lot more this time around. So I think moral of the story you know the the summary of my answer is I can better understand what I'm reading and refer back to it a lot of times I will tab books for book clubs so that I have like the quotes that I like or you know the plot twists or the characters or like you know whatever I need for book club usually that is what I will do so hopefully that answers that question okay and then last but not least it's what do I annotate my books with so I already kind of showed you guys my tabs I use these uh rainbow tabs from Amazon the link is going to be down below if you guys want to use them yourselves basically all the colors of the rainbow and the way that this makes sense to me when I'm tabbing things. Pink is for love moments. So like any kind of romance, anything that's super cute, anything that I'm just like, oh, I get the warm, fuzzy feeling. That is what the pink tab is for. Orange is for characters. This can be literally anything about a character that I think is important. So when a character gets introduced, when a character has a description, like anything about their physical appearance, anything about their character, anything about how they act with other people, like that's what orange is for. Yellow is for important information. Usually it will be like plot development. So if something happens and I'm like, ooh, that's going to affect the plot. That's going to be a yellow tab. Or like if there's something that I need to remember later down the line, you know, maybe a line that somebody says and you're like, ooh, that's a little foreshadowing. That's going to be a yellow tab. The light green is going to be the setting of the world. So any kind of like physical description of the setting. So, you know, when a fantasy person is first walking into the palace and they're like looking around and they're like, there was a huge marble archway with etched engravings of tiny little hearts because we were in Cupid's palace. You know, that is going to be a green tab. It also has like anything to do with like the physical part of the world. So for example, if our characters are using a certain type of weapon, so like guns, any type of like machinery, this like really helps in sci-fi books because they're always talking about some part of the ship and I'm like, what is this part of the ship, my friend? I don't know. So that is what the light green is for. The dark green, we're just gonna skip down here. The dark green is going to be the lore and the history of the world building. So you can see my two greens, they're like the setting, the world, the earth, you know, mm, a little stretch there. But this will be like the, if there are any like deep set lore, like mythology, stories from the world, any kind of history for the world. You know, this is for the info dumpy pages, but like kind of low key, you need to know about it. And that is going to be this tab right here. The next tab that I want to get into is the dark blue. So this is just like sad moments. 
it's pretty self-explanatory just like sad stuff you know like if a character has a really sad situation that happened to them something really sad happens like you know we got these two star-crossed lovers and one has to go off planet to go fight whoever and then the other one's got to stay here because you know they're bound to the world that's a sad moment that is a sad moment which you know brings us to the red which is like the red flags the bad moments the mad moments the moments that make me super angry or on another note not like physically what's in the book but like stuff that doesn't make sense like it doesn't make sense you know what i'm saying sometimes you're reading a book you're like that don't make no sense that's our red flag so that's what my red tab is for and then the light blue is going to be the magic system of the world so y'all know i mean really i just be i just be marking it up and obviously this isn't going to be used much in the sci-fi books but like in my fantasy books you know there's like magic all up in the and they really explain things like in mistborn they're like oh if you eat metal you know each metal type gives you every single type of power in the world okay so that's gonna be a light blue and then the two purples these are probably my favorite tabs because this is my favorite color and they mean my favorites it's very very simple so the light purple is going to be quotes like favorite lines like one-liners where like the person says something and you're like oh my god that was so good this is the tab that I use when I whenever I do like the favorite lines like I used to do this post on Instagram all the time but like I'm slacking but like that's where I get like the favorite lines where they're all tabbed with this color and then the dark purple is like my favorite moments so this can be more than just a quote this can be like a whole entire page paragraph a thing that happened like it can be banter between two characters that like I'm just like yes you really got his ass or like you know what I mean whatever it is and that is gonna be the dark purple tab okay so now that I went through the tabbing system let's go through kind of like the other things that I use so I do have highlighters for each of these colors they are the colors of the rainbow some of them do double up like for example obviously I've only got one blue so for my two blues or like my green my two greens I will highlight but then do a combo shot with these Office Depot pins that I got so long ago and differentiate kind of like what the highlighted thing is right so I've got green colors for every single tab that I use and the really the crazy like mood part of my annotating is probably with the underlining and the highlighting the I would say the highlighting usually happens when it's like more important one one sentence or, or like a couple sentence concepts whereas the underlining is just gonna be stuff that like I need to refer back to that like pertains to the highlight but it's not as important so for example if we were doing like a character highlight right I've got an orange tab for when the character is introduced maybe I've got a highlighted tab for like a major description of the character so like you know uh I can't even think Sherman oh my god we're just gonna use his name Sherman walks through the door and his tall lanky body was covered in black fur his yellow eyes saw deep into my heart and it made me let out the breath that I didn't know I was holding then it goes into a whole character description of like his job description or like what he's wearing or like whatever so like obviously the first part of that sentence is going to be highlighted and then the next part is going to be underlined so it kind of like all goes hand in hand and this is where I was telling y'all I kind of have like a little OCD about it because like I really be highlighting and underlining and tabbing everything which obviously means that it takes me a little bit longer to get through my books but it is a really useful system and I really enjoy it the other thing that I use the last thing that I use is this like uniball black pen I use this for notes like anything that I need to write you know to explain whatever so if I highlight with a green and I'm like oh this is the setting of Lord Cassian's house that's what I write or if I don't understand a word I will circle that word and then write the definition of that word in word in the pages so for example dune is a great one you see i've circled like a couple of words here and kind of put the description like the 
the definition of them. So in this, it says, I'm not one who does not pay the fi, which is like a big tax. So that's kind of how I use the black pen. Sometimes my notes are not like prolific at all. Like for example, I've got this purple one right here. If you guys are interested in my Dune vlog, you can click the link up in the cards. Uh, you'll get more of an inside scoop of what I'm talking about. But yeah, so hopefully that made some sense in how I annotate and what everything means. I can give you guys a, another example maybe of like the highlighting and underlining thing. Perfect example. Okay, so we've got an orange tab here and Jessica is looking at someone. Who is she looking at? I'm not sure. Duke Leto, love of her life. So in this quote, it says she looked at his tallness, the darkness of his skin that made her think of olive groves and golden sun and blue water, blah, 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 blah. We get to the end of it and this is what I have highlighted. He'd become such a savage driving person since the decision to bow to the emperor's command. And that's kind of like about his character, right? So that's like how he is now. Important like current present thing about Duke Leto. Another thing that I do a lot is I'll like combo shot my tabs. So for example, this one is not only a quote that I love, but it's also a moment that I love. It's like both of the purples. Like here, this is important to the plot. So I have this like super like long, thing about what spice is to you know the people on dune so that's yellow but then here i also tabbed it um because it's explaining about the spice like the history of the spice like why the people of dune need it why they use it and that's very very important to not only the plot but the world building yeah and as you can see in this one i i did the same kind of tabbing thing this is usually what i do i'll put the tabs in and write you know what each of the tabs mean. That's it. I feel like it's hard to know kind of like more questions of what you guys would want to see with annotating because I'm not obviously in front of you guys right now. So if you do have any questions or kind of like want a more specific annotating video, like maybe we could annotate a book together. I don't know how I would do that, but we could figure it out. You guys can leave those comments down below um, if you have any questions or kind of like you want more information. I feel like I've I summed it up pretty well. I guess the one thing I didn't talk about was like my nonfiction tabbing. When it comes to nonfiction, because I match them with the title, there's really no rhyme or reason. I think in this one I did a similar thing where like the purple is gonna be my favorite stuff and yellow is kind of just like important things I have to remember. There are pink tabs, which I'm assuming are like my favorite, favorite parts because I I wrote in the margin of this pink tab, oh my god, oh my god. So yeah, and that's, <laughs> I love this part. It says, Yasmin, for instance, never assumed that there was anything embarrassing about being asexual. Yes. Yes. Like, oh my god, duh. Yes, Yasmin, you're not wrong. And that's, I'm sure that's why I said, oh my god. <laughs> I'm like very Steve Carell in that moment. Loki, if you guys haven't read this book about asexuality, like you need to. Neither here nor there. So yeah, anyway, that's kind of kind of how I do nonfiction. I feel like Spectrum Woman, Women is the same way. I probably have like one tab that's like the information tab and then another tab for like favorite things that I like um, and need to remember. So yeah, that's pretty much it. As far as like how the tabs look, I never really care. I mean, I like them to look a little messy and to be kind of like out there like this. So I don't know. I think it just depends on kind of like what the size of the book is and like how special the book is to me because you can see my poppy war tabs are very like pretty much like the same size i don't know if you can see that yeah i feel like i have gone over everything in the annotating sphere hopefully that answers a lot of your questions and if you have any more like i said leave them down below i will answer them and help you on your annotating guide as best as i can i know there are much more simpler ways to annotate so my advice to you is to just find a way that works for you find a system that works for your brain like for me i'm very much like colors and categories like i'm a visual person so like having the color coordinate to different things really helps my brain understand what's going on and refer back to it later but you might not be that way or if you are you know you can try this system so yes I think that's everything that I want to say um, if you like this video give it a like for me comment down below like I said with anything that you might have questions about and if you made it this far in the video why don't you drop a rainbow down below in honor of my tabs and I will know that you actually enjoyed this video up until this point if you guys want to support me and Monique on this channel, feel free to subscribe and turn on that notification bell if you don't want to miss another video from us. And I currently at this point don't 
know who I'm going to tag in this video to keep the tag going, but they will be linked down below. So go ahead and check out everyone that I've mentioned in the description box and do me a favor, like their most recent video, comment. Yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say. So until our next video, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!